Well, I've never seen one do that before. It's pretty cool. Might have gotten a little carried away on this one. Welcome to the shop. This is a WeCreate Vision 20 watt diode laser cutter and engraver, and I'm pretty excited about this one. It was well packaged and the manual was helpful and well uh, detailed out as far as the hardware and the software. There wasn't a lot to assemble on this one and that's always nice when it comes out of the box that there are just a few things to put together. I'm not sure why they didn't put this air pump inside the machine. It's an external one, but uh, it seemed to work just fine and blow air down below the laser nozzle. It came to life and it raises up because the laser will actually interfere with the height of the slats there. So it has to be in the raised position to be able to install those. There's an optional fume filter that uh, I have here and it has three stages to it. This big one right here I think is filled with activated carbon because it rattles around a little bit and then a paper filter and another pre-filter element that sit on top. Now it's easy to control and turn on and off and you can adjust the speed or you can use the remote control if you have it uh, put somewhere kind of out of reach. The outside housing is all made of metal and it's nice powder coat on it and so let's go ahead and turn this on and try some cuts. Now one thing about diode lasers is they can't generally cut acrylic unless it's black acrylic. Correct me if I'm wrong there if you're a laser expert, but I believe that's the case. So I figured I'd start off the material test here with some black acrylic. Now it drops down and this is when it hits its autofocus. And so it automatically sets the height of the laser. And as far as I understand, there's not a way to manually uh, focus or adjust that height. You just have to rely on the autofocus, which made me a little bit nervous, but I made a lot of cuts and engraving uh, tests with this and it didn't miss a beat. And this right here is just great quality. It came out really nice with the uh, black acrylic. Next, I'm gonna try it out with some wood, which is gonna be one of my uh, most common, if not the most common use case for me. I'd like to use wood to make little welding fixtures or prototypes, things like that. So this is some 3 8 inch thick, just soft wood. I'm not sure exactly what kind, maybe pine board that I had laying around from a project. And the 20 watts is plenty to crank right through that in a single pass. And you can see it's a very narrow kerf. Now there's a lot of advantages to a diode laser like this compared with a CO2 laser, not necessarily in terms of cutting ability, but you don't have to have any kind of water cooling. It's uh, just, just a good, robust, simple system and it costs a lot less. And, and that's a good kerf right there. I mean, it's, it's good quality cut. Let's dive into the software a little bit and set up this next one. Now, this is my logo and you can go in the software and do things like remove different colors and set it up to be able to engrave. Now I'm gonna put a circle around the outside that will be set to cut. So it'll engrave the image of the logo and then cut along that circle that I added. There are settings for all sorts of different materials in here already and I found them to be really good. They were pretty accurate uh, from, from the ones that I tested. And it was nice that you can fine tune them and it even showed a reference table so you could have an idea of how dark it's gonna get based on different settings if you wanted to fine tune things. Now you have to use the camera to align the material right here so you can see where the material is and then move your part into alignment to cut and then head into the autofocus. Now the autofocus here, I was talking about a little bit earlier. Now it did take a little bit of time and this could be a disadvantage. It would be nice if it could just save the height based on your material thickness because you have to wait for this each time and that could add some cycle time if you're really trying to crank stuff out. The positioning of this wasn't all that important because I'm going to be cutting my material in the same setup. But either way, it came out really well. This is just some synthetic uh, leather right here to make patches like I have on my hats. And it came out great. There's really good detail in that small text. And I think there's not a lot to complain about there. And, and that could be a really good use for it. I wanted to try engraving on some wood and also cutting through plywood because I know the glue in plywood can make it a little more challenging sometimes to get through than other uh, types of just hard or soft wood. 
and it cut through really nice, good kerf. You can see there's some depth to that engraving. It was a bit of a rough surface on the plywood, but I think you'd get an even more crisp line if you had a smoother surface, but certainly would work. I was surprised to see some settings in there for stainless steel because I wasn't aware that you could engrave stainless steel with a diode laser like this or, or make any kind of a mark. But I figured I'd try it out anyway since there was a setting there and I opened it up and I was surprised how well it worked. This is with no uh, coating or anything. I know you can get coatings that you put on that help, but it made a pretty good little uh, mark on the surface there, a little oxide mark that, uh, I don't know, there's probably something useful there. And I tried it on carbon steel and, and that worked as well. So I think there are some things to do with that. And the detail on that fine text is really good, especially for the price of something like this. Now, these aren't cheap. It's uh, still a fair amount, but it's about a third the price of the CO2 laser that I have. And it's a fraction of the price of something, uh, you know, much more expensive and maybe mainstream. I think this is becoming mainstream. So this is cardboard cutting in real time. And this is for a prototype of a bearing hanger and this is a good use of it before i cut out a metal part it's nice if i can get a prototype and see what that's going to look like hold it in place and actually physically handle it and so that worked great i also repeated it on some thin plywood and it cut no problem so i think this is a really promising machine for those practical applications but i wanted to try some artistic applications as well so i got on amazon and i ordered some little key fobs and these were about 50 cents a piece and then I ordered some slate coasters, and these were about a buck and a half, just prime delivery, small quantities off Amazon. And I was thinking, you know, you could probably earn the money back from this pretty quickly by making something like these, because if you have a custom logo on them, I think you could add five to ten dollars of value depending on the product that you're making, and then all of a sudden you're up to, you know, maybe 100 or 150 pieces to sell and you've paid for your laser. And that's really not an unrealistic, like crazy number, but it's gotta go better than this. Now, I just wanted to show that everything doesn't always go smoothly. There are learning curves and it doesn't always work perfectly. So I lined it up on the camera, but it came out in the wrong location. And I'm using a calibration procedure here that it has to be able to calibrate the camera and see if we can improve that a little bit. So it's going to mark some X's on this plywood and then use the camera to go around and find them and identify where that is. And we'll see if that helps. So I've put it back in the same location. And once again, it's off a little bit, but it's certainly much improved. Now, if I were doing these, I would actually use the laser to cut out a plywood fixture that was at a known location in the laser. So I'm not relying on the camera to get that precise of a location. But I thought, you know what? In the center, it's probably gonna be better than it is at the edges. So for these one-offs, I just put one in the middle there to try that and see if that worked better, and it did. I mean, that's right on the money right there. So uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm just using these little uh, alcohol prep pads, uh, little medical ones. Now that's gonna look great on the keys to the shop truck. Just kidding, I don't have a shop truck, but if I had one, this would look great on it. I mean, it's certainly something that you could sell and uh, I think that that's, that's a pretty neat use or a great gift, if nothing else. Now, I've never tried engraving these coasters on any of the three lasers that I've had in the past, and so I'm, I'm pretty excited to see how these come out. And it's straightforward. Everything seems to be running great. I just wanted to get an idea of the real time there before I speed it up. This whole thing took maybe about three minutes to engrave one of those coasters, and it looks really nice. I mean, that's sharp. You could make all sorts of different designs on those, and I think it'd be a great gift or item you could sell. Now, they asked if I wanted a plywood pack, and this is not what I expected, but the plywood they sent out had all these different uh, decorations, and I'll have to think about how to use those, but they have a whole bunch of projects, a couple hundred projects, that you can actually download and just cut straight out of the uh, software there. So if you're not really good with the design software, you can do that. And I did that. This is a little catapult kit that you can put together out of plywood. I thought it might be fun for the kids, so I, I cut one of those out. It took about 10 minutes to cut that. Now I'm going to try the rotary here on a water bottle. And it has a rotary chuck 
on the one end and it just uses a chuck key almost like a drill and on the other end it has a little jack with some a couple of bearings for supports and so the idea is that you level it out and then run that so here it is in real time engraving a logo on there but uh, it, it didn't go as smoothly as I'd hoped. So it was good up until now. Now watch really close at the chuck, it popped out. So you'll notice the logo is now uh, off to the side, there's a line where it didn't hold it very well because I have such a large round on the bottom of this bottle that those chuck jaws didn't handle it. Now it came with some pins or things that I could install in the chuck and probably uh, get it with this chuck or make some custom jaws in some way, or even just a little bit of tape to hold it in place would have done the job. But I figured I'd let it finish and see how it turned out. And there's always some learning curves. And, and that's the thing to remember is, is you don't just buy something like this and everything goes perfectly every time, but the overall engraving wasn't too bad. So I figured I'd try it again on this water bottle that has a little bit more square bottom and get a feel for how well that rotary can actually track and maintain position to be able to get a nice engraving on it. And that worked out really well. I think it could use a little bit of cleaning, but the detail is all there and the motion definitely worked. So, I mean, there are a lot of different things you can do with this, a lot of possibilities, both on the mechanical side as well as decorative stuff. All right, well, that was a ton of fun. So to wrap it up, let's talk about some of the pros and cons of the machine, right? So I think that there are some real advantages. The enclosure is awesome. I like the raise and lower of the whole gantry system to be able to focus itself. The fume extraction worked really well. I didn't have any scent or, or anything happening here, so that was really good, especially with the fume filter. I think that added some extra suction to it. Now, there are a few things that are both pros and cons. One of those is the camera for alignment. Now, that's a pro because it's really user-friendly and it's easy to just drag your image on the software where you want it. But the con is, that it wasn't perfectly accurate. So when I was trying to put the logo on those key fobs, it was off by a little bit, I don't know, maybe a millimeter off to the side, but that was noticeable on something that small. And so if I were making those, I'd need to be aware of that limitation and I would probably make myself a little fixture that I located and actually laser cut on the machine so I know exactly where those pieces need to go. And if I did that, it wouldn't be any issue. That would help me with that fine placement, but it is something else I'm gonna have to deal with. Now, one of the other things that's a pro and a con is the autofocus. It's really nice, it worked really well, so it could figure out the height However, you had to wait for it to do that every time. So if I was trying to make 50 or 100 of something, then I'd have to run one and then autofocus again and run one. And when you autofocus, it's just gonna have to find the same spot that it was already at, assuming you're using the same material thickness. So it would be really nice in the software if you could skip the autofocus and just repeat the same material over and over and over again. So that would be a uh, recommendation that, that I might have to improve this. That being said, the price of this is a fraction of what you'll pay. It's about a third of what my CO2 laser costs and it does just about everything. The only material I'm aware of that you can't do with a diode laser like this that I can with mine, and I'm sure I'm missing some, but the only one I'm aware of is clear acrylic. So you're gonna miss out on that, but you'll be able to do pretty much everything that I actually use that one for on this right here. So I think it's a great, uh, a great deal as long as you know what you're getting. There are links in the description below that does provide a commission to the channel, but I wouldn't ever want you to buy something just for that reason. But if you are buying it anyway, I really appreciate the support. Thanks a ton for tuning in, and let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up, and we'll see you next time.